Hi everyone, so in today's video we're going to go over price elasticity of demand as well as some popular past paper questions that students often get wrong. So let's begin by defining PED, which is a measure of the responsiveness of the quantity of a good demanded to a change in its price. So it's the responsiveness of quantity demanded to a change in price. A key distinction to note here is that we're not just looking at if price increases 5 dollars then if quantity demanded increases less than five dollars then it's an elastic it's proportional so it's a percentage increase according to the initial price or the initial quantity so if there's inelastic demand and ped is less than one then we would say that this is a situation where the percentage change in quantity demanded is smaller than the percentage change in price so quantity demanded is relatively unresponsive to price changes if PED is greater than 1, then quantity demanded is relatively responsive to price changes. If it is unitary elastic, then quantity demanded changes proportional to a change in price. And perfectly inelastic, of course, the percentage change in quantity demanded is 0, regardless of the change in price. We can think of a perfectly inelastic demand curve as being for things like certain pharmaceutical drugs or for products that people would be addicted to, so in the case of drug addicts. And then perfectly elastic demand where PED is equal to infinity, where a change in price results in an infinitely large response in quantity demanded, um, that could be something like potato farmers, right? Because regardless of the price of potatoes on the market, potato farmers will continue to grow whatever quantity of potatoes they can. Graphically, to show a perfectly inelastic demand curve, it would just be a straight vertical line, right? Because with whatever change in price, there's no change in quantity demanded. And equally, with a perfectly elastic demand curve, we would see a perfectly horizontal line. Because no matter the price, quantity is changing. Okay, now let's look at the non-price determinants of PED. So the first one being the closeness and number of substitutes. So obviously, the more substitutes that there are, and the more similar that they are, the more elastic PED would be because, for instance, if we're looking at a product like Pepsi, if suddenly the price of Pepsi goes up, the quantity demanded of Pepsi would be probably relatively elastic because there's a close substitute, Coca-Cola, and there's also many other substitutes for sodas, right? So we could say that the more close substitutes there are, the more elastic the PED for a particular good would be. The next determinant is the proportion of income that a good represents. So usually, if we're looking at a good like a paperclip, that's such a minimal proportion of my income that a change in its price will not change my quantity demanded of it much. Whereas if it's a good like a car, that's a greater proportion of my income. So if its price increases, the quantity demanded of that car will decrease proportionately more than the increase in price. So the greater the proportion of income a good represents, the more likely the good is relatively elastic. The next determinant is whether the good is a luxury or a necessity. So obviously if a good is a necessity, it's more likely to have inelastic PED because it is indispensable, whereas a luxury good like a expensive handbag not only represents a greater proportion of income, but it is also a luxury good. It's not necessary, so it's more likely to be PED relatively elastic. Another big determinant is the time frame. So if we're looking at the PED of a good in the very short term, like within a day, so let's say the, the price of a certain pharmaceutical drug increases and then we look at how much quantity demanded has changed within a day or within a month, obviously the PED will be relatively inelastic, if not wholly inelastic within the short term because we have not yet found substitutes. But in the long term, the idea is that with technological advances, we will find substitutes, right? So the more time elapses, the greater the elasticity of a good. The next determinant is the definition. So how narrowly is a good defined? So if we say the price elasticity of food, well, food is an extremely general definition for something. So obviously, because there are no close substitutes to a good as widely generally defined as food, that would be greatly inelastic. The same thing goes for cars. If suddenly the price increase of cars in general, then that would be relatively inelastic because we're looking at cars as a whole. Whereas if we're looking at, for instance, just Nissan cars, then that would be relatively more elastic. Okay, so now that we've reviewed the general idea of PD, let's look at some common questions. So this is a paper three question. It is, why does the PED vary along a straight line demand curve? This question comes up all the time. It is a part of a syllabus point, so you have to know how to answer it. And I think the easiest way to answer it is to look at the formula. So the formula for PED is percentage change in quantity demanded over percentage change in price. But we can also write that as just the change in quantity over the change in price times the initial price over the initial quantity. 
if we analyze that formula, we basically see that a part of it is the inverse of the slope of the demand curve, right? Because demand is change in Y over change in X, which in this case is change in price over change in quantity, which is the inverse of the first part of the PED formula. So basically, the PED formula is the inverse of the demand curve slope times P1 over Q1, and obviously the values of P1 and Q1 change according to the point at which we're at on the demand curve. So here's a graph that shows the PED on each point of the demand curve. If we look when the demand curve intersects the y-axis, that's infinitely elastic, and that is because quantity is zero at that point, right? So we have price, whatever price one is, over quantity one, which in this case is zero because it is the y-intercept, and any fraction divided by zero is infinity. So therefore, it makes sense why PED is infinity there. And then when PED equals one, that is when demand that is when price and quantity are equal, they, they both are one. And then when the demand curve intersects the x-axis, that is PED equals zero, and that is because at the x-axis price is zero, right? So zero over whatever quantity is, is still zero, and beyond that it's negative, so it's inelastic. Something to note is that PED is always negative, right? Because an increase in price always results in a decrease in quantity demanded, so they always move in opposite directions. It's always negative, but for the sake of it, economists only write it in positive because it is redundant, right? Everybody knows that when price goes up, quantity goes down. Okay, now the second question that we're going to look at is actually a paper one question that asks, how is it useful for governments and firms to use price elasticity of demand? Well, for the government, this relates to the tax revenue. The first thing to note is that tax revenue is price times quantity. So if a government places a tax, a compulsory levy on a good, then the government revenue is the extent of the tax times the quantity that demanded. So obviously a tax on the good will increase the price of the good for consumers, but if the demand is inelastic, then with an increase in price of the good, the quantity demanded will decrease proportionately less. So this is relevant to the government tax revenue because when tax increases and quantity demand decreases proportionally proportionately less than government tax revenue actually increases. Whereas if the government decides to tax a price elastic good, then with the tax quantity demanded will decrease substantially more than price will increase. And therefore the government will not actually get much tax revenue because price times quantity quantity will go down more, so revenue will fall. But another thing that is important for the government to note is how the tax will affect quantity demanded, right? So the government usually places tax on demerit goods like cigarettes to try to get its quantity demanded down. If the government realizes that this is a PED inelastic good, then this will help it adjust the tax to make it high enough, strong enough to get the quantity demanded low enough, right? Because it realizes that quantity demanded is not very responsive to price. Another aspect that is important to consider is that if the government places a tax on a good that is extremely PED elastic, then with an increase in price due to the tax, consumption will go down so drastically that the entire market might collapse, right? And this may cause vast unemployment, which of course is not a macroeconomic objective of the government. But now moving on to firms. So why do firms like to look at PD? Well, it's the same idea. PED helps firms decide whether increasing or decreasing price is the best decision to make to increase revenue. So here we have two graphs. So in the first graph, we see a firm that is producing on the inelastic portion of the demand curve. So when the firm increases price, price increases proportionately more than quantity demanded decreases. So price goes up more than quantity goes down, so therefore revenue increases. However, in the second situation, we have a firm that is producing on the elastic portion of the demand curve. And as a result, when the firm increases its, its price, quantity demanded falls proportionately more than prices increase, so its revenue falls. And this is shown by the relative size of the area that is gained, as shown by the plus mark, and the area that is lost, as shown by the minus sign. So the general rule that we get from this is if the firm is producing on the elastic portion of the demand curve, then the firm has it in their best interest to decrease price because quantity demanded will increase proportionately more and therefore revenue will increase. However, if the firm is producing on the inelastic portion of the demand curve, then it is in their best interest to increase price because quantity demand will fall proportionately less than price will increase and therefore revenue will increase. It is only when PED is 1, when it is unitary elastic, that the firm's revenue is maximized. If you remember when MR equals 0, that is when total revenue is maximized. And that should also make sense because when MR equals 0, that's the x-intercept of the MR curve, and when the demand curve intersects the x-axis, that is also when PED equals 1. So total revenue is maximized when PED equals 1. You can also think of it because no matter the increase in price, 
quantity demand will increase proportionally, so revenue will not change. If that last part on the MR didn't make sense, don't worry, you will learn more about it on theory of the firm. Okay, and the last topic that we're going to cover is price volatility and PED. So you might have come across the fact that agricultural goods tend to be more price volatile being than other goods and the basis for this is simply that the more an elastic demand is the greater fluctuations in price as a cost of supply so if suddenly the supply of apples on the market completely changes well then the price of apples are, is going to change drastically because demand for apples are relatively inelastic so people aren't going to change their consumption drastically they're going to keep demanding more or less the same supply of apples so if supply can't keep up price will change a lot but it's also worth noting that the price volatility is only made worse by the fact that agricultural goods have both inelastic price elasticity of supply and price inelastic PED. We haven't covered PES yet, but it essentially just means the flexibility that suppliers have in adjusting to demand. So for agricultural goods, the PES is very inelastic because with the change in demand, farmers can't immediately meet the new demand for potatoes or for apples because harvesting seasons need to be taken into account and these goods aren't storable so they can't just be taken out of storage and put into the market. So basically because we have both of these factors that supply can adjust really to demand and demand can't really adjust to supply, price volatility is made worse and some of the consequences of this price volatility if you were given a paper one question that asked you to evaluate the consequences one of the problems with that is that the unpredictable nature of the prices of agricultural goods makes it really difficult for farmers in developing countries to kind of estimate their income for the government to estimate tax revenue for firms to make investment decisions all because the price of agricultural goods is so volatile and if the economy is specialized then that then that can create uncertainty okay so we've successfully reviewed PED and gone over some common past questions i hope this was helpful and please subscribe please like our videos comment if you have any suggestions on what we should cover next